In this lesson, we are going to cover transferring a unified comfort panel project via an Ethernet cable to a unified panel. I am using the Smart Client program right now to connect to my unified comfort panel with the Smart Server functionality. So in the Smart Client program, I can actually see the screens on the unified comfort panel. So I'm going to select Service and Commissioning, and then select Transfer. Under Transfer Mode, you want to make sure that Enable Transfer is selected to allow transfers to take place. You can also enable an encrypted project transfer and enter in a password. So this is where you would set a password for the transfer. So then in the development environment, you would also have to have the same password included. And in order for the transfer to complete, the password is going to have to match on both sides. I'm going to select Home, and I'm going to go to the System Properties and I'm going to select Panel Information. There is a firmware slash image version that is loaded on the Unified Comfort Panel. So you have to have an image version that is at least equal to the device version that you have configured in the Unified Comfort Panel project. I'm going to close the Smart Client software and open up TIA Portal. Underneath the Unified Comfort Panel, the Runtime Settings, and then the General Area, there's a section for encrypted transfer. This is where you can activate the encrypted transfer and enter in the password. And this must match what was entered in on the panel in order for the transfer to take place. Next, I'm going to select the device configuration and select the unified comfort panel. Under the catalog information, there is a version that is set for the device. This defines the functionality of the panel. So I'm using an 18.0.0.1 image. So I can load this into that image version or greater on a unified comfort panel. If my device version here was configured to a newer version than what's actually installed on the panel, you would have to go through the process of updating the operating system on the panel to bring it up to at least this device version. I'm going to highlight my unified comfort panel in the project tree. There is a general download button here for download to device. There is also an online menu. In the online menu, there is the download to device, which I just showed up in the toolbar, but there's also this extended download to the device. I'm going to use the extended download to device because this will allow me to see all of the parameters that I can select for my transfer. When you do pick download to device, it can remember previous settings. This top area here has the different slots or ports that are configured in the IP addresses on the Unified Comfort Panel. We are going to be downloading to the slot 5x1, so we'll have to pick that down here in the configuration. The type of PG interface for the transfer can either be PN slash IE or Ethernet. Typically, you're going to use PN slash IE. Unless you're going to be updating the operating system, then you would have to pick an Ethernet connection. The PG slash PC interface, this is the network adapter on your computer that has access to the unified comfort panel that you want to download to. The connection to interface slash subnet is the actual IP address that you're going to try to transfer to. So the 5x1 is going to be the 192.168.0.2 in this case. So I will pick Start Search. It will look for accessible devices. So it found my unified comfort panel at that IP address. There is a flash LED option. That flash LED option can be used to identify the device that you're about to download to. If I would check that box, it would cause the HMI screen to flash so that you can visually you know, identify that you are downloading to the proper device. So I'm going to select Load. The project will be compiled. If you see any entries in pink, you are going to have to address those before the load button will become active. You can expand out any of the triangles by the different messages and then see the reason for certain responses. So I'm going to select no action and change this to be a full download. 
There is a refresh button here, so I'm going to just select this refresh button. And it actually brought up another entry here, which is called Fit. And this is showing that a more recent compatible firmware image exists on the target device. So I have an 18.0.0.2 image on my Unified Comfort Panel. The version in my project is only version 18.0.0.1. So I can download my older device configuration into this compatible version. If it was a incompatible version, then I would have the option to be able to update the operating system. For the runtime start here, if I select no action, I do have a choice to, between no action or start the runtime after the download. I'll just keep it as no action. The runtime values, I will expand this out. When I look at the runtime values, you have an option to keep the current values of tags or pending alarms in the runtime system, you know, or have them be reset to their default values. There is this keep current user administration data in runtime. I am going to uncheck that. So that means that my user administration from my TIA portal project will be put down into the unified comfort panel. There is an option to reset the logs. Right now it's set to no reset, but I could change that to say reset all if I wanted to, and then that would delete or reset them on the unified comfort panel. You also do have an option for the HMI runtime where you can actually see, you know, the versions that are already loaded, you know, on this particular HMI. So if there is a discrepancy here, you would be able to see the differences as well. So up top, I am going to select full download and then select load. You can download to the panel if you do have warnings. But if you have any errors, you will not be able to download to the Unified Comfort Panel. In this lesson, we covered doing an Ethernet transfer to the Unified Comfort Panel.